दोस्तों आई एम जॉइन विथ अनिरबान दास गुप्ता मैन आई एम वेरी फॉर्चुनेट टू से इज अ फ्रेंड ऑफ माइंड Uh, we'll get into that details later but mai ek cheez kahunga whenever i see this man's face it just brings a smile to me itna matlab itna youthful itna happy and i'm not saying this to get he's my friend you know but even from that time even before i knew him the show and then i had a chance to work with anirban on a web series hum wo bhi baat karenge but <laughs> lovely to see you and uh, how are you doing these days what's what's happening in lockdown uh nothing nothing i'm playing chess mostly uh because uh, yeah aap yeah. us level ke aadmi ho acha bahut uh, acha bahut acha i just like got into it because now comedians uh, have started streaming chess so uh, acha like, nice uh, nice uh, hooked into that uh, friend of mine samay uh, had a tournament with uh, all comedians where i lost miserably very nice <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then like it's good fun so i've been like invested in chess uh, and doing nothing like wanted to get yeah. some writing done but uh, mm-hmm. i worked for one week just one week and then again i like you know started chilling so i mean obviously in these times of jhadu pocha and all this are, are you doing these kind of things yeah. now ya kya hai everything <laughs> good good chalo yeah. we'll get we'll get straight into talking about you um sure. for those of you who don't know anirban is from calcutta now anirban even when you look at the whole stand up comedy scene which is not very old in india even by those standards Yeah. Calcutta is really not the first place you associate with stand-up comedy. Right. Tell us a bit about you know how you how you took to it. What what were some of your earlier shows like that process? Uh, like uh, I think uh, I personally got lucky because uh, like uh, everybody has been an accidental comedian. Like you know in those mm. like 2010 say 2013 14, like everybody who came on like kind of got into it accidentally. Like went to an open mic and like kept on doing it. I got lucky because I got uh, a good group of uh, friends uh, to build the scene in Calcutta. Uh, uh, there's Web of Sethia, there's Sor of Ghosh. So I think like you know all all of us kind of came together and worked uh, towards making some kind of a scene in Calcutta. Uh, in those days, the shows uh, would have were like uh, you know if we got ten people, it would be a bonanza. right if you got 10 people in the audience it would be the biggest show of our lives yeah. and uh, yeah we just kept kept doing it uh, we used to do auditorium shows uh, in the middle like you know when somebody from bombay came we used to open for them so there we got an experience for like you know of bigger shows but mostly it was open mics and performing uh, in front of like your friends or other comics that's all <laughs> there's one there's one of your jokes in the shows as you uh, the uber driver the driver you got takes you back was the guy to yeah. show something like that no? <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you do you do you remember your first show like yeah. where it was how many yeah. people can tell us a bit about that oh, the my first uh, open mic is the craziest open, first open mic story you'll ever hear normally what yeah, happens yeah. is uh, the first show is always every every comedian's first show is at a small open mic where they go and like you know four five people are there it's a very like you know normal story but my uh, open mic first open mic was in a 600 seater okay 600 seater auditorium where there are 20 people who have showed up okay 20 people have showed up in a six and so just empty chairs all around and uh, it's an open mic where uh, this guy called rof ganji uh, who technically started the comedy scene in calcutta so he he is very rich and he has uh, like uh, put a prize money of 1 lakh okay uh, for an open mic and this is calcutta's first open mic not just mine so this is calcutta's wow. first open mic 600 seater auditorium and 1 lakh prize money and three people have signed up for it three people okay right. it's me webhav setia and uh, antariksh another person called antariksh and uh, both me and webhav we didn't win antariksh won the 1 lakh and we we just started yeah, doing comedy from that day nice and, and you know um so going back going back to a younger age do you i mean were, were you drawn towards comedy was there people in your family you know like we, we often have one one uncle in the family who who cracks jokes sometimes crude jokes was there yeah. something like some someone in your inner circle or was it always something you maybe books or tv or movies your inspiration of sorts i think uh, youtube uh, like through youtube i got introduced into the world of stand up so uh, everybody seen those russell peters videos when it got viral so i was also one of them so i used to like watch it i, I was in uh, college that time so we used to like 
uh, assemble in one room and watch his videos, watch his like you know long videos. Uh, and uh, Twitter, Twitter is another like uh, place from mm-hmm. where I got uh, some connection with the comedy scene because when Twitter took off in India in those days, uh, you know I used to follow Tanmay and Khamba and all these guys uh, who were doing comedy in Bombay or Delhi and. That's how I understood that okay, there is a scene here. I was in Pune at that time. So I uh, told myself that okay, whenever I'm uh, in Bombay, I'm going to go and check out the comedy store, the new comedy club uh, at, uh, in Lower Parel. And uh, right. then, then uh, thankfully, I got, uh, I got a job in Bombay uh, for, with Godrej. So I came down here for the training and all. Uh, and uh, that's when I used to go to a uh, comedy store like thrice a week. Okay, and uh, that's my, that. That was my first experience of a live show. And in those uh, in those days, only foreign acts used to perform, like uh, comedians from uh, U.S., Canada, England, uh, Australia, and uh, mm-hmm. all the Indian comics used to have that open spot, like a five-minute spot, ten-minute spot. So Tanmay, mm-hmm. Aditi, Ashish Shaki, all these guys used to come and do like five because they were the upcoming comics at that point. And I was like uh, so hooked onto this whole experience of. Watching show, watching a show live, and like people losing it mm-hmm. every night. So I, I, I used to go there uh, like thrice a week. And uh, initially, I didn't, I didn't know that comedians repeat their material, right? So I used to go on a Thursday, then I used to go on a Friday again with the same lineup. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, they did, they did this joke uh, yesterday also. But I'm like, this is still okay because I'm still having fun. And then I moved back to Calcutta uh, with my job, and uh, then nothing happened for. Two two and a half years, and then I did that 600 seater open mic. <laughs> wow! So while you're watching all these guys in in Lower Parel, you obviously this is something which you really wanted to pursue, right? At yes, yes, right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at that point, I didn't really realize it that you know I want to do this. Uh, I always mm-hmm. used to keep a track of what's happening in the comedy scene, follow all these guys. AIB came up, and like you know, I used to just just be a fan. And then uh, when the chance came to like do an open mic, I uh, that's when I realized that hey, this is something that I really want to do. Uh, mm-hmm. Otherwise, uh, I had no plan. So unless that that open mic wasn't announced, I probably wouldn't have done it. And uh, because of the experience in the comedy store at that point, my only aim in life was to like you know get get a spot at that place. So uh, it took it took about three four years for me to like get there. And uh, it was like. probably the happiest moment of my life when like i finally got a weekend at that club wow do you do you remember the first joke you wrote yeah, i i remember that the first joke was something to do with my uh, wedding uh, because uh, i had just yeah i just gotten married like that's around a, the same time. that's a good starting point na huh? shaadi <laughs> <laughs> my my first open mic and my uh, wedding uh, was like uh, i think one month apart so uh, Yeah, so I I wrote Things something. To, yeah, <laughs> it was a horrible joke. I wrote something about uh, like you know all, I had a South Indian wedding, so I wrote about yeah. some rituals and all is very bad. <laughs> <laughs> and going back to you know your first your first stand up. Hmm. Can you look back at the like at the jokes which which worked and the ones with which fell flat? I mean, obviously. it can be a very nice feeling when you when it, when something goes off the mark but were you yeah. able to sort of say okay now when i'm doing something let's go with that and when i'm making a mistake did you learn from the mistakes or were like chalo theek hai main bolunga public ko jo response dena hai dene do no 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 like every show uh, taught me a lot uh, like i was just discovering like you know how to like you know do stand up like i had no idea so like mm. uh, i remember in the first show the uh, the thing that got the maximum laugh was uh, not my jokes but uh, me looking at the watch to see why time is not over yet <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah like uh, i learned quite quite a fair bit in those days uh, uh, i learned that yeah like if you uh, go with your strongest jokes don't experiment much especially because uh, we were doing uh, big auditoriums like opening for other comics at that like nobody should open for bigger comics when you are like two shows in or three shows in but we were uh, doing that So the stakes were even like higher. So I remember, like I was opening for Veer Das once uh, in Kala Mandir, which is an 1100 seater. And uh, mm. at that that show, I thought, ki, okay, I'll try something new. Like I was like hardly into stand-up. I'd done like four gigs maybe, and I thought that I'll do something new. 
and I I bombed so bad that the the full audience was booing me. Okay? <laughs> they were oh, booing, geez. low clapping me like you know, ki go go go. And uh, I had I had a comeback. I had a comeback which got a laugh. But the overall experience was uh, horrible. And uh, yeah, that taught me that you don't just go and like try out something in such a big stage mm. without prep. Mm. Then of course you you came to Bombay. You you made the move. You started doing more gigs. Before we come to your first uh, Amazon show, take it easy. What 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 for you was the turning point uh, in the Bombay phase? In the Bombay phase, I would say uh, like I like the turning point for me in 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 terms of uh, my confidence increasing was uh, when I got the weekend at the comedy club here. Uh, by then, it was called Canvas Laugh Club, and I think that sure. did, uh, like my confidence a world of good because that was my like dream. to like you know perform uh, a weekend here and uh, so when i moved to bombay i used to like just uh, try to get my as many shows at the club as possible because i realized that's the best place to do stand up like you know in this country there's no better place than that room and uh, yeah so once once i got the lc uh, everything else kind of fell in place i started getting other shows i started getting uh, yeah a lot of other work writing work I like you know I, when I came to Bombay, uh, a lot of comedians come to Bombay with writing gigs, but I had come mm. without one. Uh, so, uh, but then eventually I like took up a lot of like uh, gigs, writing for the IPL for Hotstar and all these like you know writing gigs uh, to kind of sustain myself till you know I made some more money in stand-up. Yeah. So that's obviously a very big part. It's it's not something which uh, many people know about. What you have to do to keep the fire yeah. burning, right? You mentioned writing gigs and stuff yeah. like that. so how i mean things things may come more easier to you because you have a have a flair for the written word and for comedy but i say that let's say someone like a uh, how you were years ago if if that person lands up in bombay tomorrow yeah. what advice what advice would you give them um i would say uh, it's 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 good to have a couple of plans in place like if one doesn't work uh, another will uh, for me personally uh, because i was doing comedy like you know it was like if, it was a kind of a position of privilege in that sense where like you know comedians were just growing and people were discovering them uh, the media was writing about it uh, so if somebody like uh, so i feel having two plans is important if one plan doesn't work out you have another one to go for because bombay is really tough like you know while while making up shows i realized uh, that like you know the struggle the real struggle is not the struggle that i went through it's actually the struggle that like you know people in the film industry go through where uh, you know they are working for years and years and like still not getting a break uh, comedians on the other hand have it very easy uh, to be honest yeah yeah so when you got your first amazon show obviously that was your big breakout what kind of changes did you see in the way people perhaps viewed you now that you had a hit amazon show like take it easy uh i i think uh, like a lot of a uh, lot more people started coming to my show so uh, that that is the that's like great thing yeah and that's the only thing that you need and thankfully yeah take it easy i really enjoyed uh, writing and working on take it easy it was a show that's very close to me uh, mm. and yeah like uh, the reaction was actually very good like take it easy uh, whether it's in terms of uh, finances or whether in terms of more people coming to my shows uh that happened because after take it easy i did not do stand up for al- almost like a year year and a half because of offsource mm. and uh, yeah. like uh, i would have probably like uh, milked that uh, audience a little more if i continued doing stand up at that period because i quit like just when take it easy was taking off i had quit like yeah. kind of taking taken a break uh but the reaction has been pretty good like you know a lot of people like still write to me about that show yeah Now, Arvind, you obviously you mentioned of source now a few times, so we have to somehow shift to that. Of source, yeah. for those who who do not know, is a uh, is a dark comedy which is which released on Amazon Prime the earlier this year. Arvind is the uh, one of the co-writers, and it's his baby. Um, I had a very small role in that, for which I'll always be thankful to Arvind. But if you can just tell me, Arvind, a bit about from the time of source was just a thought in your head and Dibbo's head, from that to putting it on paper to then a full script. to then getting it across to different platforms to be to it being accepted and then finally coming out i know i mentioned yeah. a, a range of emotions there in yeah. brief just that whole how many years was that process first of all uh the whole process was 6 years 
six, six years. years. Wow. Yeah. 2014 is when uh, we kind of started writing it, but very informally. Like we we just had the thought that what if a man doesn't want to die? Uh, mm-hmm. Like man wants to die but is unable to. Uh, now uh, like hires a contract killer and then something goes wrong. So that was the initial thought. So we had different versions of it, and uh, back in 2015, we had actually pitched it to uh, Woot, uh, mm. and that Woot was like one of the first like uh, platforms, and uh, they were like, uh, we, honestly, it's good that they rejected us because we were not ready at all. Because I go and see that draft, it's horrible, but uh, yeah. the narration was pretty good. The narration was pretty good, and uh, that gave us some confidence. Uh, and uh, till about 2017 2014 to 2017 uh, we uh, me and dibbo we wrote the show uh, in a very informal way like you know once a week i'll probably call him and i'll say ki hey here's one idea i think we should do this and then like two weeks later he'd call me and say ki hey let's do this also and that's how like all the ideas kept on compiling and like you know some story started to take shape and uh, in 2017 that's when we like started pitching it uh, seriously Uh, OML, uh, who's my manage, who's also my management agency, uh, they uh, took it up. They were very excited, uh, and uh, they were with the show till the end. They are the producer, and yeah. uh, they like pitched it to uh, Amazon. Uh, OML pitched it in such a way that, believe me, by the time I went to Amazon, the show was sold. So like wow. my job of selling the show uh, was literally nothing. Like OML sold sold the show even before like I showed up uh, to Amazon, and we had a couple of readings at Amazon and. Uh, got a lot of encouragement from uh, the head of amazon vijay subramanian uh, he really liked the script it's one of his favorite scripts and uh, he actually told me to like not hold back because when i was pitching to amazon what i was trying to do is uh, was trying to like keep it sane because it's so sh- sh- so absurd and bizarre that i was worried that they'd be turned off like you know somebody like amazon uh-huh. the deals with the masses might get turned on so i was like kind of playing it safe in some places and uh, vijay uh, kind of like saw through that and he was like why are you doing it why why don't you go all out because this show is only going to work when you go all out other if you like you know absolutely stop with, yeah and uh, that 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 provided us a lot of encouragement like got some good advice and then yeah then we continued then sort of ghost came on board and sort of wrote the screenplay and the dialogues of the show and uh, there's no better person in the world who can write the show better than him He's brilliant, yeah. You yeah. know, uh, Anirban, I used to watch you. I know I was hardly on set for a few. Days. I used to, I used to watch you. You're always there, sort of there, but not quite there. I'm sure inside you, it must have been a tornado of of emotion. But you, at least in in my view, you never really let it show how yeah. how stressed for you if you were. Um, but how how is it watching? You know, your your creation, your baby, now in the hands of so many other people, a director, a DOP, yeah. ADs. What was that that like? uh like i think uh, because anubhuti was like directing uh, the show uh, it like i had no i had no worries honestly like you know because she's, uh, she's brilliant yeah yeah she she is so well planned and she's uh, she is insane like you know she like uh, has everything under control so my uh, time on set was completely a holiday you know i i used to like <laughs> you're being honest here right Absolutely honest. Like I had no work. Like you know, you saw me on set. Like did I ever contribute anything? <laughs> you were there in the background. I was yeah. wondering, is he stressed out or is he actually just chilled? You know, in that zone. Well, I, I, great, I, great. I, I wasn't stressed. I, I was stressed out uh, after the show uh, was uh, uh, finished. Like after we had shot the show, yeah. uh, that that's when like the my stress actually started when we had the focus groups and focus groups didn't go well. So I got into a fight with everybody. and like you know pissed a lot of people then uh, the release was pushed for various reasons like yeah, it came yeah, yeah, yeah. that didn't happen so those were the actual uh, moments that stressed me yeah. out but on set like uh, afsos set was one of the happiest sets that i've ever seen because uh, you know before uh, before this i had gone to other sets like you know sets of my friends where my friends were like either producing or shooting and uh, it's always chaos Like you know, film mm-hmm. set is always people shouting, "Yeah, light, like yeah, yeah, like yeah, oh, like yeah, chill." Like it's oh like, yes, oh yes. Nothing is planned. Everything is happening last moment. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody's finishing their schedule. Like you know, scenes for the day. Things are getting like you know pushed to the next day. But uh, yeah, nothing yeah. happened. Nothing happened in Afsos. Like we shot for 35 days, and there wasn't even one spillover, which I think yeah, is no. 
like testament to how anubuti ran the show it's insane yeah yeah one more one more last question on a source is there a second season uh, <laughs> a great question <laughs> purely 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 greedy personal self plug question if, if if we are doing this story then only you are alive so you are to definitely <laughs> the queen the queen got you uh, from the jail. queen where is dr goldfish going no i'm just kidding you um uh, a few more questions is this and i'll tell you about uh, the second season is uh, like uh, we haven't really uh, spoken to amazon about it so uh, it's like uh, we haven't spoken after the like you know uh, show came out there hasn't been talked a lot of people have been messaging me about season 2 and uh, i am not I replying know, I to imagine it. yeah I'm that's why replying. that's why i i i put you on the spot like <laughs> chalo i have anybody attention yeah. <laughs> we we have we have a few we have a few ideas but uh, like uh, this story kind of like you know uh, i like how the story like you know com- is complete so uh, if we do a second season i don't know how that will shape up but uh, we haven't had the call yet so we haven't uh, spoken about it you can call me when it happens but uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so is this is, is this the best time to sort of be in this genre now with all the opportunities the platform the digital streaming yes yes absolutely like uh, even even uh, like even without the lockdown like you know the otts have been like uh, going crazy with the amount of shows and now uh, this is the this is probably the only thing that you can do like maybe write and develop a show and like pitch it because they are still like you know listening most of the industries are completely shut but this is at least like because films and series take so much so much time in coming out that uh, you know now is a good time to like uh, work on something yeah it, yeah it's it's too good like uh, some something like upsource would not come on indian tv if we didn't have like mm. online platform yeah so absolutely not absolutely not yeah but you know it's 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 been a privilege watching you over the past few years and of course knowing you and doing a show i hope yeah. post lockdown you do you do get back to writing of course and also to doing some more shows i mean like you said you you took a break because of uh, because of upsource but yeah. now that you've had that whole you, you've had time to bask in the success I really hope you get back to doing more shows and we and Thank we see you. you. Yeah. Dosto that was Anirban Das Gupta and uh, we have a lot I, more I just uh, I just want to add one thing I want to thank Please. you for uh, agreeing to do uh, Upsos and uh, right. having you on board was such a such a great feeling for all of us like all the writers love you so much that we used to like be very excited when you used to fly thank down you, from Delhi you. you know for a day <laughs> or two days to do the shoot and you have absolutely nailed it. it is so thank nice thank you thank you i you know thank you you you're very i was in fact sitting i was sitting right here when uh, <laughs> I, i i got that dm from you on twitter and uh, i mentioned this in a video i was yeah. like a, a stand up comedian is getting in touch with me i'm like okay I, like where where is that candid camera type thing you know but uh, <laughs> from there like i said i i was very grateful to you and dibbo and sorov and everyone and i had a blast and uh, so yeah thank you. Thank Upsource. You so much. If anyone, if anyone has not watched Upsource, please go to Amazon Prime Video and watch it. You will not be disappointed, as far as I am concerned. ठीक है निबंध. Thank you. Thank you so much. Time. Stay safe. Thank stay you. healthy. Stay at home and keep smiling. Thank you. Keep it clean. Thank you.